Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the monthly meeting of the Waverly School Committee, June 5th. Call the meeting to order. First order of business is to review and approve the minutes of May 1st. So moved. Uh, second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Financial statements and warrants. Okay. So tonight you have, I believe, eight warrants totaling $34,977.02 to sign. Actually, I think that might be wrong. I'm going to have to recalculate that because I noticed that there's a minus instead of a plus. So I have to check that. Um, and I want to go over tonight uh, where we are with our lunch program, and that is the legal size papers. And once we go through this, then I want to talk a little bit about available year-end funds. Um, so right now, through May, our loss for the year is $9,555.96. That is up from last year when it was $4,073.57. I do believe that for June, this should come down because at this point, we're not purchasing, we're using inventory. So there won't be any new purchases. So I'm hoping that we this will reduce a little bit, not a lot. Um, I'm still thinking we're going to be looking at about, you know, maybe $9,8900 to $9,100 as a loss. Um, on the second page, this is all the statistical analysis, and um, what I can tell you from my looking at this, and again, we're comparing 10 months of 16 to only 9 months of 17. If you look on the bottom right, the, the lowest number, last year our, our participation for the year was 65.35%, meaning 65% of our children participated in the lunch. Right now, we're only at 60%. So we're down 5% in participation, which is, I think is the key to our, our losing our money as well as our costs going up. Um, and I also did put the full year of the 15, 16 to, um, on there as well. Uh, and right now, as far as I can tell, and I don't have verification, I think our unpaid balances are around $1,100. I usually don't get the final list until June. But my, according to my calculations, they should be around $1,125.70. That's just people who haven't... Who've taken lunch and haven't paid yet. So that's going to transition us to talking about the available year-end funds. And... Again, since my no, no, my calculations will be right on this one. Um, I'm projecting that we should have at the end of um, after this month's bills are paid, which you're signing tonight. Uh, we did have a refund of some out of district uh, tuition that we can add back in. We should have about sixty-seven thousand uh, dollars left. I'm estimating our June <coughs> bills to run about twenty-five thousand, which would leave us with approximately forty-two thousand two hundred dollars. So I met with um, the principal and I met with Bob Lesko, and this is what we will, what we are recommending our priorities be to spend that money. The school lunch deficit and the school lunch bad debt will have to be taken care of first, and I'm estimating that to be about eleven thousand dollars between the two. It could be a little lower, what could be a little higher. The the bad debt and the deficit together okay. would be about eleven thousand dollars. One of our plans for the cafeteria is to make it computerized, so to purchase that the, the Meals Plus would be about $7,000 max. Um, my tech director is giving us five to $7,000 estimate. I think it is worth the investment so that we have more timely um, reports as to uh, uh, balances owed and we can generate invoices for parents weekly instead of um, monthly. And also, we may be able to uh, have a piece that would send them emails, <laughs> which we don't have now. All our communication is manual. Is that software that you're talking about? Yes, mm -hmm. it's a, Meals Plus is a software. And it would just be Waverly <clears throat> buying it, or does the other schools have it? So currently in the district, um, Frontier and Deerfield have it. We are recommending that all the, the three others, Sunderland, Conway, and Waitley, all get it. And it costs 7000 for each school? Yes. Because you have to buy equipment to start it up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to buy a terminal. We have to buy a push screen. 
Uh, we have to buy the software. We have to buy the users. So. Any idea what the annual cost will look like after the first year? I believe it's about three thousand dollars a so year. We'd have to build that into our operating budget. Correct. The annual software costs. Is it? Is it for the whole three thousand for the whole district? No, three thousand dollars per school. You think? Oh. Okay. Well, well, I think that's, well, anyway, that's just important to keep in mind. Those costs. Yeah. Okay. But because we can, it well, doesn't. I guess by going computerized and monthly bills, it, if somebody's not going to pay for their lunches, we'll say on the average of $1,000 a year, you know, they're not going to pay for their lunches, whether they so get a, a better whether track they, of it. <laughs> I mean, we, yeah, we, can well, give, no, we can give them a lot of, we can give them a lot of Reminders. weekly statements and stuff like that, which, <laughs> which might help. I mean, might, but. But this is also the first step to being, get going to the process where parents can pay online. If we don't have a computer system, if we don't have a software, then we can't take online payments. Well, I guess another, my understanding is another issue is the management of the whole, not just the sort of tracking of everything. But so we're going to talk about that. Okay. Separately? Yes. Because I, I guess I wouldn't want to throw good money on bad to the extent that Understood. we're not resolving other the, issues that the, maybe need to be addressed first. The recommendation to, to go with Meals Plus is because it has been so successful in the high school and in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. It's an efficient way of doing business. It helps when it's time to reconcile these kinds of reports plus what goes to uh, DESE and it uh, will streamline some of what... And it uniforms. Right now we have five schools and they each do their bookkeeping different, which right. is just a nightmare. And I can't, we cannot reconcile anything. I've got some, I mean, some schools it's because parents don't pay. In other schools it's because we can't prove to the parents that the kid took lunch. So it, this would give us a record of every day. Right now we do everything, we track everything manually. Mm -hmm. And that adds hours and we're trying to reduce hours so we make a small investment in equipment and hopefully we can cut down on labor hours. Well, <laughs> I'm all for it. I guess I just feel like it's a very, like to be handed the decision like right at the very end of the year. It would be nice to include this maybe in our capital budget <laughs> and be thinking about it more. <laughs> Again, the max is seven. That's, that, that's the high end. It could come in at five. It, it's all about when we go out pricing the equipment that we need. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I know what you're saying, Katie, but the other thing is, if, say if we don't spend it for something we really need, then it goes, it goes, back, to, it goes back to the town, the money mm -hmm. does. So, um, well, before we make a yeah. decision, I'd like to hear what other projects they're thinking of. Yeah. Okay, so then um, those, that's just the cafeteria. Then um, we would like to get the garage roof done this summer. That installed, we have a price of about $5,000 for that. Uh, and then the other project that uh, Pete and Bob Lesko um, want to make a priority is starting to refloor the classrooms, removing the carpet, uh, and replacing it with VCT tile. So we, they're estimating that would be about $4,500 a classroom, and we could do four classrooms, and that would be $18,000, and that would bring us to $41,000. And again, these are estimates, so we have some wiggle room. Is that something that... Um the teachers are on board with Pete with changing from nice, comfortable carpet to something that's a lot easier to clean. You know, what's their what's their feedback? They're worried about the sound in the classroom. Yeah. I'm less worried about. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll the kids will have mat. We'll buy the mats. We can talk about area carpets if teachers prefer. But classrooms are so filled with stuff already that I don't know that just the removal of the carpet's really going to change the sound that much in a room. Um, but there's ways to mitigate that. And the reality is the uh, carpets after all these years are just not healthy anymore. We right. can't keep them clean. Right. And, um, and I think it'll be more sanitary and more healthy to have tile floors with, um, with floor mats or, or an we, area rug we, of some kind. With the different, the tiles, are we picking one color throughout the whole place, or what do you? Yeah, we're, we're going to be. I'm, I expect that we'll be uniform, but we haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. We haven't looked at tile or what we're going to choose, but I expect that we'll we'll want some uniformity. I don't think each room needs to look different. I mean, I think it, it's a great idea of keeping things clean and waxed, 
you know, somebody gets sick, it's a lot easier to clean clean up. Yeah, it makes it makes summer know? maintenance faster and easier too because you're not waiting for carpets to dry. You're not you don't have fans blowing on them. Yeah, um, extracting using the extractor takes time. <coughs> right. Cleaning a tile floor is a whole lot quicker. Can I roll back to Meals Plus because I do want to read it. It's, it's two thousand dollars the first time we purchase it, and it's a thousand dollars annually after that. So it's three thousand once, and then one thousand after. Okay, that Good. makes more That's sense. Sorry, yeah. 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 we're at seven thousand. When you hit me with that, I was like. Well, yeah. it's seven oh, thousand to get the there, software, right. to get the the machine and stuff. It's seven thousand dollars. No, right. no, but the, Mr. The, Trevi, the problem is we don't know that we have the cabling into the kitchen. So that's so that it, it could go up to seven thousand if we have to have an electrician pull the cables and and everything else to put. You know, I went in the wrong profession, I guess. You know, <laughs> it's going to cost five thousand dollars for somebody to run line in there. I'll pull the line. <laughs> We'd have to pay. No, your you wife wouldn't want you to be. We'd up have there. to pay you prevailing wage. Yes. But that maintenance is a lot nicer. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for looking that. up that one thousand a year after the first initial year, and that's probably because we'll be able to call them for support if things aren't working. Support right. and the updates. And who's in our school here? Who's going to be taking care of that? Well, we, that's to be worked out. I mean, we're hoping so. It's going to happen live in the lunchroom. Right. So the computer terminal, as the kids come through. And this is how it works in Deerfield. We have a woman um, that works two hours. She works the lunch shift. And she comes through. She sees the child. She pushes the child's name. She pushes the lunch he took. And off the child goes. And then at the end of the month, I get these beautiful reports that are all reconciled and balanced. And they total to what was reported to Desi. Is that, is that going to be a lot? Is that going to be? I'm sorry. No, I was, no go ahead. Is that going to be a lot easier when we get when we're trying to get money from the federal government for mm -hmm. reduced lunch mm -hmm. programs and okay so the challenge with this is a cloud-based system that i don't think you don't know no oh it's not a cloud-based system. it works what? um from power school uh -huh. it's part of our power school which our servers run it's okay. a secure so it's on server. our servers um so would it then be responsible for configuring it and yes. supporting the cafeteria workers yes. and making sure that it's doing they, what they, they do need that now at it. Frontier and Deerfield. And so those are the district staff that help with Yes, that and they're on board. I did mm -hmm. before we went through with this. I asked Mr. Paul um, if, if this would be a, a huge, and he said no. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some training, some initial training. But after that, he says it's basically seamless, and it, they run the updates at night um, on a monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. And unless someone, unless the actual terminal breaks, it's. And are we gonna, is Power School being rolled out to the elementary school? Power School was or rolled out last, last summer. Okay. But that only is for the staff and the... No, that's all. Is it that's for parents, our, too? Or no? At, at the high Does school. Does it allow a portal where yeah. you can look up, go in and see? Well, like, right. Online. We have it at the high school. Okay. At, at the high school, they have the parent portal. Um, what we're working on now in the elementary schools is a standard-based report card, mm -hmm. so that all of that information will go into Power School, and they will generate. Power School will generate the report card, but it's a different, it's a different rating system or a different assessment system than A, B, C, D, or one, two, three. So it, it, it actually lists every single standard we're expecting the children to show mastery by. Yeah. And then it tells you if they're approaching mastery or if they've made mastery. Right. But that's what we have now, right? Yeah, we, we have a standards-based report card already, mm -hmm. but this is going to be it's uh, incorporated into Power School. Oh, yeah. Because okay. so we do them by hand, so to speak. So we'll all be integrated at the end of the day. Yes, every, every school, every... Power schools, which is what the standard, the national standard is power school. Annie, I have one very specific question. I know that we moved on to the surplus, but back to this, um, the FY last year's school lunch um, sheet, 15, 16, mm -hmm. uh, in June it shows the bad debt at the end of the year, $885.20. Was that? Is that number calculated at the end of June? Those, that number was money. the number I was given with a list of names attached to it. So that was the final amount at last year. Okay. So that should and, be a negative. And one of the things, and one of the things that I'm often asked is, you know, uh, does money 
sometimes come in after the fact, yes. after July 1? Yes. Do we, if the, if the deficit or if the debt is big enough, do we try to recuperate it through small claims court? What usually happens to that? So now with the, law, the way the law is, the law states that we cannot leave, um, that we have to pay the bad debt and that we cannot leave it in the account in the negative. So once we calculate this, I create an invoice um, that you sign in the summer, and then that money gets deposited into the school lunch account. <clears throat> because it is technically town money that paid that 825, any of that 825 we collect after the fact goes to the <coughs> town, back to the general fund. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, the increase that we did, is there any s s wait? Did you see any benefit or? You know, I guess one thought is that... I wouldn't call it a benefit. It was, we didn't have I mean, a choice. It didn't offset enough, I guess. Right. Um, but if we look, um, it didn't hurt our participation, because if we look at the monthly participation, September we were at 52%, October we were at 60, almost 64, then back down to 59, December 67, then January it was 62. That's when we had the price increase, yeah. and then it was 64, 63. Up. So it kind of went up, mm -hmm. the participation. Um, and now, you know, I think would be a good segue, uh, Dr. Carey, mm -hmm. for you to talk about the plan so that we can, because yeah. the participation so, is probably one of our biggest issues. So one of the things that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. <coughs> <coughs> that uh, we've been working on, actually since the beginning of the school year, particularly at uh, the high school, is, um, kind of doing some improvements in the uh, in, in the whole cafeteria the presentation. What we found is that we did some things and then they just stopped. So what we need to do is find some consistency, really find out where we're, you know, where the gap is and what's happening. So we have modified the hours of um, the uh, the director of the food services um, in the program starting July 1st. We've cut some hours. Um, we have hired a school lunch consultant. His name is Jim Halstead. He's going to analyze our operations and all, at all of our schools, all, all five. And he will work with us this summer to develop an action plan, um, which we will implement in the fall. And after 12 weeks, this fall, three months, if we do not see improvement in selections, presentation, participation, and revenues, we will come back to the table and we will have some tough decisions to make. Something needs, we agree, something needs to change. But we have looked at it every which way. I've had meetings with, with the principals. I've met with, uh, Patty and I have been going at it. We're looking at numbers, we're looking at papers, we're looking at revenues and the bottom line is we need someone who really understands food service programs who can tell us where the gaps are what are we doing what can we do to uh, improve in what we're doing we believe it's could be participation we believe it could be selection but we're not really sure so we are bringing someone in to take a look at what we're doing Who's paying for this consultant? I believe we're going to take it out of some money that we had set aside to add some um, functionality to our infinite vision system. So the, sco the, the, the schools have already paid for it. The towns have already paid for it. What's the infinite vision system? Infinite visions is our accounting software. So we were going to do some expansions. So instead of doing the expansion, we're going to use that money to, to pay for the consultant. And how long is he on board for for at least three months? No. After Joe? No, no, he won't be on board for three months. He'll come in for a week and observe, and then he'll write up a, an action plan for us, and then we have to implement it. And what Dr. <coughs> Carey is saying, we're going to give it September, October, and November, and we better see some change results. Our participation better be higher. Our menu selections and our presentation and our marketing to our students need to be better. 
What is his background? Do you, do you know? Uh, Mr. Halstead. Um, Mr. Halstead is someone I worked with in another uh, district. He's got over 30, probably 40 years now because it's been a while since I worked with him uh, as a food service industry, a school food service industry person, and he is very good at turning programs around to making them profitable. I, I hate, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, hopefully, but we've heard, I've heard for many years the same song and dance about three months when we, we hired the last person that came in to hopefully change our program around, and some of us at the time were a little skeptical about it, but, you know, if, you know, if this person can do it, I'm, I'm all for it, I'm hoping Pete's thinking the same thing about I mean it's it's been go it's been going on for a long time yeah it's high time you know, it's no question. it's <clears throat> and I hate to have to have to make drastic changes after November but we will well you know we will I mean it's just <clears throat> I really I, I will tell you Darius and I spent a lot of time meeting weekly this meeting on a cafeteria weekly at the regional school at the high school and we put a lot of time and effort into it and invested a lot and it um, it just didn't take off I know it I know it at the high school level when you don't have seniors eating and they're able to go out at lunchtime but say that's a hundred kids well, but yeah. still it's there's still 520 students yeah, there yeah, who so should I mean, be eating yeah. we only graduated 84 this year so so I mean yeah. So this is a serious issue, and we we really are um, taking some some drastic moves. Like I said, we changed the contracts, and we've made different things right now for immediate relief, and then we will continue to push. And I, I think I'm going to ask the same question that's been asked many times: Do we buy as five schools mm -hmm. food now? We, we more than five. <laughs> we go out with the collaborative. Okay. With most school with Good. most school districts in Franklin County. Okay. So everybody almost has the same menu every, almost every week or... Well, there's no, many, many, no, many, no, many, no, many no. choices. <laughs> many choices. And we could be doing more scratch cooking. And I'm a believer. This is what this consultant is going to tell us, that we could be doing more stra scratch cooking. What is scratch cooking? For making things. Homemade. Homemade. Oh, like making a meatloaf, <laughs> preparing a meatloaf, or making mm -hmm. a shepherd's pie. Making things that kids want to eat. Peeling mm -hmm. potatoes and then cooking them, and then... Mashing that Not up. just putting things in the oven and letting them bake for 20 minutes. Jeez, a, for you're going to have to come every day for lunch. I think having a consultant's a great um, way to make get change implemented. I would encourage us to really think about the scope of his assignment and to really encourage him to be direct and. Um, we don't have to worry about that. Open about Wilson what he thinks needs direct. to be changed so that we can really <laughs> act on that and, we and that we will have the stomach to act on it afterwards. We will have um, an action plan and we will live by the action plan for three months. And just as, uh, as Dr. Carey was saying, we, we have changed the contract. Um, our, our current staff was employed for 260 days. We've knocked that down to 190. Mm -hmm. There's no need for a food service director for 260 days. I worked for a large urban um, district and the only reason that we kept a 12-month food service director is because we had a summer feeding program we were feeding out of 13 schools all summer long mm -hmm. so right. that's something we immediately made effective I'm not looking at you anymore I'm looking at me <laughs> I'm still looking at you I just want, baby, right? I want to correct my total um, there I can are feel eight the love, Bob. <laughs> There were our, our eight warrants, but they totaled forty-nine thousand three fifteen eighty-four. And um, you, do we normally take a vote as to the priorities, or what? what I don't recall what we normally do because we're not meeting again. Well, it's mm -hmm. really up to my colleagues how they want to handle this. But uh, all right, all right, does that complete your recommendation for yes, summer warrants? Yes, it does, work? sir. Okay, so, so that doesn't give us it doesn't let's, give the town back anything really, right? They're going to try no, to spend no. all yeah. sixty seven. Well, we still have that left, right? No, no. The, the, the forty two is what I outlined. We would use it eleven thousand, oh. seven thousand, five thousand, and eighteen thousand. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. The other thing I think that you should do, and it wouldn't cost very much, that little 
storage shack out here, the roof on that needs to, or something. Yeah, no, that's going to be entirely replaced. That's a project we're discussing okay. with PTO. And that's and one way or another, we're going to we're going to scrap that one. And, and, and the other thing, it. down long range, you really need to start talking about doing something with a blacktop out here. And I think something I brought to this yeah. committee before. And uh, I mean, you drive in here now, and it at least should be sealed this summer. You ought to look into pricing that out. And and I thought, what what you know, the crap. I can put that on the list because if we, if, if the meals plus comes in at five, there's two thousand. If the if the garage roof comes in lower than five, that's a couple. You thousand. think just sealing it or just sealing the cracks? Well, I mean, I think I'm not an expert in that, but something. My, you know, I mean, you're very close to repaving that. And that. Yeah. My conversations with Keith, and I, and you guys know I brought this to the yep. committee before. That that's something we need to think about. Um, I think that what they want to do is, uh, the next time we do it, is to pave over it, you know, raise, raise the man, the, the service covers, and, and, and do another layer, and change the curbing if they have to, do new curb cuts, Absolutely. but they're not going to grind it up and take it away. I mean, especially just, you know, the, it needs to be not, not maybe, maybe not out there, you know. I was just going to say, is, is this on the capital budget plan that Mr. Lesko has presented to us? It's not at all, even down the list. Well, it, I mean, I, I guess I would propose adding it to that list. I, I, I think it. you're right. I'm going to check my list because I'm pretty sure it was on my list. Of course, the biggest thing that I'm still fighting for for this school is still not here, which is a generator. And I know we've gone That's round and round. I'm, I'm just, I'm just voicing my opinion about the generator. I know we've, I know a lot of things have been done in this last year and capital things and stuff. But, and I'll bring, I'll just bring it up so everybody can hear me on TV that this school needs a generator for our town's people that come here, if and when there's ever emergency. Well, the town do That's vote town. money for it, and I don't know where we're at. It's yeah. kind of. I know the, the, the pricing. I've heard pricing because of. Berkshire Cass <laughs> can't do it, so it's either diesel or gas or, well, some, still a gas or propane. There's still a gas I moratorium. Know. That's the problem. <laughs> or go propane, but how long does a generator last on two or three hundred gallon tanks, you know, or hundred pound tanks? So I won't say no more. Well, For that. Just keeping in mind that's well, a town appropriation, I know. not a school yeah, appropriation. I know. But, and I also, I have. Not that this isn't the place to get into it, but I, my understanding of the language around moratorium is moratorium on uses that would be significant. They a denied us. Gonna they denied here. us. They denied us. I hear they you, Patty, but a generator, we wouldn't, you know, be, we wouldn't be using it. Well, if you're using emergency. a generator, now this is what I don't get. If you're using a generator, okay, that means everybody else, you know, most people are without power and they're not using anything. So why would that put a strain? on Berkshire gas system to run our generator. I don't get it. It's politics. And, and Bob and I have Big talked politics. to them every year, and every year I get the same letter when the town of Waitley asks me to get the letter. It is an across-the-board moratorium, no I don't. I don't, Patty. I, I get it, but I'm just, <laughs> that's just, I'm just mocking the, the I know. Hey, it's when, ridiculous. when that new pipeline goes in someday, there'll be more gas we'll than we know have, what to we'll do have, with. We'll have gas at our... More gas, gas and electric is still installed. So. I have gas in my house. I just had my gas meter changed off. I'm getting mine changed over from HG&E too. They don't, they don't seem to have a moratorium. It's just Columbia. It's because they're public. Right. Huh? Do we make a motion? Should we make a motion on the spending? Of okay, so let's just quickly review the, the How thoughts much you had, Patty. Okay, so it was we have to pay the school lunch deficit and the bad debt. Um, the Meals Plus software, the garage roof, and doing four classrooms, um, VCT tile. And if there's any extra, you'll then we'll, we can look at ceiling. With the driveway. And then any, or we can look at the shed roof. Well, I said if two different. Is, is there a garage and a shed? Yeah. So people call the garage the shed, but the garage is a two, like a two car size garage. The shed is has toys in it and, <coughs> and, and tricycles. We are talking about the garage roof. Okay. The shed is going to be torn down and replaced, okay. and we're going to figure that out between PTO and, and you know us somehow. And then the uh, only other thing is that you did approve the purchase of the snowblower from the school choice funds. That has not happened yet. <coughs> and then this summer we're also going to be putting in the new phone system 
and the clocks and the intercom. So that's the other big thing that's going to be going on in this building. And we've have we, already have we got the that. final. Have we got the final price on that yet? No, you know? we but we started buying components. So once okay. we finish buying, we're doing it ourselves. So we're buying oh. different components except for the installation. Who's going to install it for us? That I don't know. Okay. Is an electrician? A, electrician? I, I don't. I okay. honestly don't know who does that work. It's, this is at the IT level. I mean, okay. IT, fancy, IT director. Fancy digital, not uh, digital clocks, but no. regular clocks. I know. Analog, analog clocks. Wait, that was the only thing that was brought up during the town meeting. Analog That's or right. digital. That's well, right. we brought that up yeah. here. I don't know. Uh, it is, um, I just pulled up Bob's um, plan, and it does say paving the roadway yeah. and sure the parking lots, and it's on the five, it's, it's, more in the five it years rather than the one year, two to five, or five plus maybe years. We, maybe that should be a capital. I would be pushed up. Yeah. Really consider moving that up and maybe do we have anything else on the capital, the capital that, the, that we gave to the town for next year for capital? I know we did. No, we didn't do anything for next year. Okay. Yeah. Can we? Do we have to do it way ahead of time? No, they have a process, and it happens usually in December of every year. Okay. Unless we? there's any other. No, I was just oh. going to ask if we could expand the capital process to include IT systems because there's sort of a move towards systems, you know, they're, a longer they, they're, look at they what's don't, coming. They don't qualify from a uh, dollar. From a capital project, but from a planning perspective. So we, be helpful we, maybe we have year. it. We have one already. So we have engaged in, um, we purchased small devices because mm -hmm. that's it, that just makes financial sense and we had a we had a consultant come in about five years ago and he set the amounts and then Scott has refreshed them so we have um, we do lease uh, devices as well and that's more like the teachers laptops so every three years and I don't know where we are with this if you're in year two or year three but every three years okay. we're refreshing so we've built those payments into our budget okay well, I just thought it would be helpful maybe if Scott wanted to come at some point and talk through with us his planning and how he thinks about it and how that intersects with the budget because we're only going to start moving to more systems like Correct. that. Correct. So we'll want to be thinking longer term about some of those right. as well. Well, I think he did that last year. Mm -hmm. Might not hurt uh, at, the the at the joint meeting. At the joint meeting. If you wanted him here at Whitley, we might want to do that early in the year considering what we're putting in all the phones and stuff. Maybe he could give us a September update. Lynn, what do you think about that, Dr. Carey? I think that it would be great for Scott to come. I think you'd find him to be very knowledgeable mm -hmm. and um, actually really well versed in every single building. He, right. he really understands the infrastructure and what we have and the resources that we need. Could you make a note to have him come in, sure. in September? <clears throat> make the same note. One of us hopefully will remember that. So I'll make a motion to, with the what do you want to call it? Extra money? Surplus. Surplus money to purchase the what, Patty, what, Patty is, what Patty has asked for, or and Pete's asked for. Mm -hmm. On a second. Okay, any further discussion? No, we'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate that. So, I think we're at public comment. Any public comment? Girls, you have anything you want to say? <laughs> Want to say hi? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Update on the tree project. You want me to give you an update? Sure. The trees are all they look good. <laughs> they look good. Okay. The trees are all are good. they? They're looking good. I don't go that far yet. I parked down here, so. It is complete. Is it complete? complete. Uh, it is complete. The last, <laughs> the last little bit of discussion that I had with Keith was whether or not he wanted to wanted us to go ahead and plant grass on the part that was supposed to be grass, and whether or not, you know, what the plan was for maintaining that. I said absolutely plant grass, and we'll just have our regular mower take care of it. So no grass out there yet. Hasn't grown yet, but I, and I don't even know if they've Any seeded needs. it. I'm not sure if they've seeded it yet. But the uh, the trees are looking good. It looks like some of them have big containers around them that I'm sure is part of their watering system. The first week, well, the first day they put them in, they used hydrants to water, and that created a bit of a problem because when, whenever the town it's runs crazy. hydrants, the color of the water changes, it stirs up all the sediment and manganese in the water and everything turned brown. And then we were told that they were going to proceed by using water trucks. I haven't seen one come in. 
Uh, doesn't mean they don't come early. We'll have a couple mm -hmm. inches in the next couple of days here. So. I think we Rain? More rain? Pretty good. Yeah. Good amount of rain. When did they we're get working on, We're working on the assumption that the watering is part of the plan because we haven't been asked right. to water them, and they watered them the first day, you know, with with the, with okay. the hydrants. Um, three weeks? Has it been three weeks almost since they were installed? Roughly? Yeah, I think I want so. to say about maybe three weeks, not much and more. And we've had a ton of rain. Maybe less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at the moment, they look great. And if you drive down Christian Lane and, and take a look over at the fields, you can well, see them. Pete, from my house, you can see From your house, you can see them. They're still small, but in a couple of years, they'll look like they've been there forever. Okay. And on big maps, the building still shows. I called them up. I said, that building broke <coughs> down. When? Months and months ago. Update your maps. <laughs> yeah. No, I think they did a great job on the project. Yes. Agreed. All right. Uh, Non-union salary recommendations. We handed those out last month. And there's been a change. And there's been a change. Um, two changes. The second page, I was asked to put in the same format as the first page, and so I did. So those numbers haven't changed, <coughs> but the format did. Um, on the front page, um, the revolving, uh, under grant and revolving personnel, the director of the out-of-school time program came to us and requested that the, the staff only receive a 1% increase this year rather than a 2%. Last year, they got more than 2% because we had to adjust, if you will remember, for the minimum wage increase, and she is implementing a um, fee increase for FY18. So she would like to have a moratorium on the wages for one year to see how the, the new fee structure will work for uh, the, to bring the tuition in. And this reflects the 1% for those people. The only question I have is under food service director, you said you cut back the you number did. of days, so that's going to reflect the... That happened today, Mr. Jaskowski, and I forgot to make the change. Okay. <laughs> It will save, uh, it's going to save lately, uh, what did we say, about $1,300? $800, thank you. <clears throat> so from, from that figure down, $800? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, this is within our budget. I know that we budgeted 2%, mm -hmm. and this is what we have before us. I'll entertain a motion to. Well, before you do that, I just I understand what you're saying about the grant revolving personnel and stuff and only doing 1%. Do they know they're getting 1% and everybody else is getting 2%? I don't know what anybody know. knows. <clears throat> they know as much as they watch the TV, the, what they watch these meetings. But, that, but don't forget, Mr. Hollow, last year they received more than a 2% increase because we had to adjust them for the minimum wage increase. Uh, yeah, the minimum wage increase. So there was no complaints when they got more than 2% when everyone else only got 2%. And okay. the reason again for the 1% is they're changing the rates? We're, we're, we're starting to lose some money in the out-of-school time program. Um, our participation is down. Uh, we have not raised our tuition rates in several years. so. We are raising them for FY18, so she'd like to hold the, the mm -hmm. salaries for one year to see what effect that is going to have on her bottom line with just having the tuition increased. So so the, the four people are only going to get a 1%, right? Is that what you said? One, two, three, four, five. The five. director herself yeah. is only going to take a 1% raise. Okay. We have to vote on that. We have to vote. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, non-union uh, increases Perfect. as printed. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Not. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, discussion on the amendment to student transportation. <clears throat> so we wanted to be more clear, and when we have stu 
students that are dropped off, um, our, our practice has always been, when you're, I'm looking for the policy itself, our practice has always been in this district, if you are K-3, to we do not drop you off unless we see a parent, a guardian, or somebody who um, has been notified, has a, a school knows, is responsible for that child. However, if the child is with an older sibling, fourth grade and above, then they can get off the bus and go into the house without seeing a parent, presumably because the fourth grade student was being responsible for that child. Our um, policy, EEA, states that grade th grade, grades K to 3 students will not be released from a vehicle unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver is present. We would like to add in or sibling in grade 4 or higher. Uh, if this occurs, a child will be returned to the school. So it should be if this, you know, it should probably be if this does not occur, a parent, guardian, designated caregiver, or sibling, it should be that uh, the child will be returned to school. What we're trying to do is put a finer point on it because in practice this has been going on for years and we want, uh, we really want it spelled out there so that parents know um, if a child is with a sibling who's in fourth or higher, they can get off the bus with their sibling. Most often, more often than not, most 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a parent or a caregiver there waiting for the child when they get off the bus. In very few cases, there is an older sibling but we would like to state it so that it's uh, yeah, and it's on the website. Everyone will understand it, and it's clear. Where is this on the website? Somewhere? Yeah, all of these um, policies. policies are on the website. There's a link to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Uh, if you'll remember, Katie uh, Marty had done a, a three-year project with them, redoing all our policies, and now they mm -hmm. host our policies online. So there's a link on our website to theirs. Okay. Um, and I have no problem with this, I think it's fine, but I have another question. <laughs> so what we would like to do is discuss it um, and have you vote, if you agree. Typically we discuss it and then vote at our next meeting. Would you like we, to wait? I don't care, I mean this is, this is so minute that doesn't make any difference to me. I don't know how you guys feel. Yeah, no, my, my question is, we talked about other policy changes, which were about people that have to be a mile away from the school to take the bus, and I don't see that anywhere in here. Uh, we and so had, I wondered if we, that should be added. We had discussed that we would be dealing with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. That would depend on the age of the child, the... Right, so the, but shouldn't we put something like that in here? It's an exception. We have the policy and then you have your exceptions. And so you don't put the exceptions to the policy and the policy. You, you live by the policy. So we have we had agreed that there's two little ones that live right. And, and as, a, as a school committee, uh, we left that decision up to the principal to make that exception. Right, but isn't the rule that you have to be a mile away from the school? Correct. And the exception is that the principal Correct. can make the exception? But that's but, not, so that's not true in all five schools, and all five schools have the same policies. Um, that's a weight policy. Right. That's more of a practice. That's more of a procedure, not a policy. Procedure, yes. Because there's a procedure so book and if you a were at the Waitley School, where would you find that policy? I guess is what I'm trying to understand. Would, it's not something we want to advertise either, so that we make exceptions all the time either. No. Because then, every, then everybody becomes an exception and there's no rule. Right, but where's the rule? The That's rule's right I'm, there. Where you have to be a mile away. If where, you don't agree, you contact the principal. Is that contractual or is that policy? A mile away? It's not, I don't see the mile away. It's I guess pretty standard. What, well, maybe it's an, it, maybe this is not the right. There's a, there could be another policy. Hang on. There's several policies under EEA. This might not just this might just be the. Well, maybe we should hold off voting on this and 
you can take it. So your predecessor should have been taken. No, <laughs> you can take the time and mm -hmm. see if there is such policy as to the mile. Yeah. And if you want to include anything to the, allow the, the transportation other. rules and regs is E E A C dash R. So <clears throat> we'd have that, that that's this is one policy. The mile thing is in E E A C and I can pull it up. Hang on one second. And I guess the other thing I'd like to ask for is better communication about like who's driving the buses and you know maybe there, the information that says here is like bus schedules are in the local newspapers before and beginning of school and individual schools. So the information about the buses is very minimal, even though like this policy may be in the policy somewhere buried. It's very hard for parents to get to that information. So I would love to think about how we could put more information on the district website about who's driving our children around. Well, you what do you, they're not public employees, so their names aren't public. Uh, so I, I have a problem. There's an issue. There's legality problem. So mm -hmm. as part of the bid process, we get everyone's license. But as far as publishing who's driving which bus, that's not public information. Are you worried about like quarry checks and stuff like that? Or? I just think parents should know who's the bus driver. Like they should have that information easily available. Like who's their teacher? <laughs> who's their principal? I yeah. don't know why. But the, bus, they, but the buses are more fluid because it, it, it could be bus driver A, but then if the bus has issues, then it could be bus driver B. So it could be bus driver A on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and it could yeah. be bus driver B on Tuesdays and Thursdays because of scheduling. Yeah. But when you want to know that, is I guess it's just a very important role that someone plays with people's children, and I, I think, think if that we had our own bus company, if the district had its own district buses, mm -hmm. and we had our own transportation director that would work with us, for us, but we're contracting out to another company, yeah. and he could they do it? He <laughs> changes. Well, Sunderland's had he has the right of assignment. He he uh, he changes all the time right. based on. Well, maybe then we could include it on our next bid for bus services that we would want some maybe more information shared. About. I mean, you. I mean, I, I. I'm just one voice. We should ask other people, but they're not public employees. Yeah. I don't know how we would go about that. I mean, I, I remember. I remember when my kids did take the bus. We knew who the bus driver was, because we know who it was. He lived. Most of them live in town or one of the towns, and we knew who the bus driver was on that particular day. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. You should know who the bus driver is. I mean, could you see the same I person? I see him, but I don't really. I, I mean, guess I'm more worried about the accountability. So you're saying he reports into the bus company. Yes. And then the bus company manages him. Mm -hmm. And my bus driver's fine, so I don't really have an issue with my bus driver. But when there's a concern, uh, a student concern or a parent concern, it goes to Patty. Patty calls Lenny. They well, work. This you know? says it goes to Pete, actually. Well, yeah, all you know, that, I'm just. That is a child pickup. That's not a problem on the bus. No, everything comes through me, honestly, and then I pass it on to Patty because I don't. I'm not in a position to negotiate with the bus company. Mm -hmm. But even if we have a problem behavior, even if somebody reports a problem with the driver, all I can really do is pass it along. They do report to me because most of them don't think about calling right. Patty, and that. But my job is to pass it along to Patty. You know, that's, there's really nothing. But, not much else I yeah. can do. Yeah, I mean, I can call the bus company myself, but since there is a person who manages the whole company, I document it and pass it along. I, I'm just trying to make it as positive and safe an experience as possible for our children. Well, so. I have to say that given the years that I was a principal, which were many, <laughs> and nine years on the school committee, I, this is the first time I've ever heard anybody ask who's the bus driver. Because hmm. most, I, of, most lately the drivers are virtually cemented into the bus. <laughs> you know, they're the same people year after year, mm -hmm. and you know, and I, 
I never heard, honestly, never. Okay, I'm not no, no, trying no, to pick on your kid, no. but I've never heard anybody well, that's ask what I said. that Maybe question. other people don't have that. They are subject to the same as any other district employee. They're quarried. They're, they mm -hmm. are fingerprinted, um, and they they have to give us their license every year. <coughs> so when we go out to bid, I get that all information. Every year, I also get the insurance uh, riders for from the bus company. So, and if there's a personnel issue, as Dr. Carey said, uh, Mr. Gripko and I work it out. And we, as far as I've been here in five years, and Mr. Skrowski, you've been here, I can't count how many years. This is, in my experience, in 18 years of dealing with transportation, this is the safest bus company I have ever worked with. And I'm not saying they're not safe. I'm just trying to promote more community and connection between. Well, the con I, think, I, think, I think the connection is, is I'm out there we're picking up my kids or I'm at the bus stop with the kids in the morning and I see that same bus driver and I get the, I get the uh, in some cases, get to know the person but like we did over the years when my kids were little. I've got other towns who complain that they don't want the bus driver knowing their children's name. They don't want the bus driver being friendly with their children. So I walk a very fine mm -hmm. line with these bus drivers between, okay, be nice, but don't be too friendly. You know, say hello, but maybe don't call them by their name. Get Probably one of the hardest jobs. So our, what I just want to add that, um, that we have two excellent drivers right now. I'm very happy with the two drivers we have now. And, and that but if and when there have been times and if and when there are times in the future where concerns are regular enough or significant enough to raise a concern, I, I, you know, I pass all that information along. I also want to sort of support the notion that that does happen now. When, when, when there's a student behavior issue, for example, on the bus, I'll talk to Bill or Bill, they're both Bills these days. One of them is new to us, the other one's been with us a few years. Um, and more often than not, that driver will say, I know I chatted with the mom a little bit about it, we tried to put together a little plan, the mom or dad talked to the kid, but you know, it's working or it's not working. So some of that informally still happens. Um, I had an experience just two weeks ago where um, um, two siblings had made an arrangement one was riding their regular bus home, the other was going on a play date, and the driver of the first bus said to me, I'm missing so-and-so, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that says a lot to me when a driver realizes her sister's on, but she's not here. And I checked, and sure enough, she was just on the other bus. Really good sign when a, when a driver knows a kid is not on the bus that normally is, mm -hmm. you know? So right now, I'm very pleased with the two drivers we have. And, um, and I hope that they stick around for a long time. <laughs> well, it's just, it's um, nationwide, not just here, but it, it's exacerbated because we are such a small community. No one wants to be bus drivers anymore. I know. I know. And the Mass uh, Registry of Motor Vehicles has made getting, obtaining the um, driver's license very expensive. And, and sometimes cumbersome for people to do it. So we have a, an issue where we've got jobs and we have no applicants. Mm -hmm. Don's going to be coming with a new bus driver. There's <laughs> your next <laughs> retirement career. I did that once for a money after I retired. Did you? How long did it last? I did it one day. I, and it's not because, <laughs> no, you did it more than one day. You did it every Memorial Day oh, parade. Yeah, I did the Memorial Day parade. But I, had a, I have a CDL license, so I was able to do it. And Lenny was in a bench, and he banged me. I said, and it really it was quite funny because when I drove in the Frontier, Marty was standing outside. You know, we used to stand out and greet the kids yeah. when they came in the Frontier. And I beeped the horn, and she really wasn't paying any attention to me. And I made sure she saw me, and I, you know, <laughs> she almost fell over. She saw me driving the bus. <laughs> <coughs> Anyhow, well, so, so you okay with that? Five. All right. We'll take, are, we'll, are we going to table? Are we going to table it till I our mean, first meeting in September to vote on it? Uh, unless it doesn't sound like they're going to make any changes okay. to it, so if we well, want to just vote on it, I'll make we'll it. I'll make a motion to for the changes in policy EEA. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. I'll, I'll only add, if, I don't, if you don't mind, I'll just add that, you know, for example, with the last request of, for a couple of riders that were less than a mile away, they're young, there's no sidewalks, plenty of room on the buses, I'm going to say yes to that. If, you, if this committee 
is ever in a position where you have a concern, a question about how I might come to a decision or something like that, please feel free to let me know and ask me. I'll be happy to discuss it with you. But, you know, on a bus that's half full with a couple of very young kids and no sidewalks, I'll approve that request and say, sure, that was send them out of the way. Just to give you a heads up. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to keep kids off the bus unnecessarily when, they're, when their ridership is not really full and they're young and there's no sidewalks and that's a no-brainer. Under different circumstances, you know, I could consider it, but thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, summary of the superintendent's evaluation. So you received in your packet um, Ken Cutterback's report, um, the superintendent's performance goals met, um, standard two, instructional leadership proficient, standard three, management and operations proficient. Um, uh, Dr. Carey was consistently recognized for her work in completing uh, the recommendations and eventual move to the central offices. Standard four, community and family engagement, proficient. Um, she, uh, Dr. Carey received proficient ratings in three of the four indicators with a needs improvement for rating in communications, which I am working on and uh, I'm, I have started sending out um, bi-weekly uh, newsletters to the school committee members so they know what my world is like and what I'm doing with the five different districts and uh, tonight's superintendent's report will explain to you all the ins and outs of our um, website and all the information that's available there and different things that we're doing. Um, standard five, four, five, professional culture, proficient, um, Dr. Carey received proficient ratings in five of the six indicators with the needs improvement for communications. Um, it is also important to know shared um, vision and managing, managing co conflict indicators received ratings that were split between needs improvement and proficient. Indicating these are areas Dr. Carey can work on to improve communication and sharing her vision. The, uh, as the principals will tell you that our um, Administrator Summit, we, you know, we like to call it a retreat, but it's really a lot of work. Uh, we will be going over the vision and the mission, the mission of the district and the vision statement, and um, so that we're all in agreement. Uh, do we want to continue with the vision that we have? Do we want to go forward with that? Um, so overall, the committee evaluation provides a summary rating of met expectations for Dr. Carey. Dr. Carey received a proficient rating on her progress and performance for the four standards uh, indicated in the evaluation. We commend Dr. Carey for a successful first year in the Union 38 school community and look forward to her continued work in the community. So I appreciate everyone's input. There were um, one per, you know, there was a couple, well, uh, a couple of needs improvements without any um, any recommendations. Like, what would you like to see better? What do you, you know, as a, as an educator, we can't give that kind of feedback to a teacher without actually recommending something. But I would like to thank Katie for your wonderful um, comments and very helpful. And I have taken them all, you know, seriously, and I'm working really hard. So, of course, the biggest um, the biggest hurdle I have is communication and getting that information out there. And you'll see from my superintendent's report that I am really um, working on it and uh, we'll keep working to get better. No one's perfect, but I, I appreciate that. That's a lot to do in the first year. Yeah, I think it was a great overall um, between the frontier and the union. It, they were great. I, I'm very pleased and I appreciate working for you and having you. I would like to thank you for allowing me to be your superintendent. This is a little bit of a follow up for the public. Um, the superintendent's evaluation is done by the entire school district, our union, the four elementary schools, and Frontier separately. So there's 16 school committee members that potentially can write the evaluation or have input in the evaluation. I think nine chose to do so, mm -hmm. which I think is a little low, but 
for whatever reason. Uh, but that's how it works, and those are submitted to Ken Cuddyback, who is the chairman of the Union School Committee, and he compiles the information and does a summary that Patty reported on. So just so people know how that is. Dr. Lynn. I mean, well, sorry. <laughs> if you've been around a year. Uh, See, now we're becoming the same yeah, you know. changeable. See, that's why I need to get off. I can't recognize people anymore. <laughs> But anyhow. What did you say? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> so that's how the process works, and good luck. Thank you very much. I, I, um, I, I like to say one thing before we get into other reports. I, I've worked with Don for, he said he's been on the school committee nine years. I think I've been with him for seven years. So I came aboard um, in one part of the season there when we somebody dropped out and stuff. And, uh, I knew him as a principal. I knew him after he retired. <laughs> Came back. You know, see, it's raining because of you right now. Yes. Because of those trees. those trees. We need the water. Yeah, we need the water. But I want to say thank you for being a great committee member with me. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Second. Thank you. <laughs> it's been great okay. for you, too. All right, we're ready for reports. Is that first one? Okay. I'm sorry. Do you guys have a report? No. I just said my um, uh, reporting for the last time. All right. <laughs> no report. No report. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Then it's me. So you have my principal's report in front of you, and I just wanted to once again give you a school choice update, and you have those numbers in front of you too. There's really no change since last month when I brought you these numbers. We're looking at about the same. Um, Right now we have, we're anticipating 43 school choice students. That was the same number you saw last month. Um, we have 40 right now. Um, our overall uh, population will grow a little bit too. If you look at the overall numbers in add pre-K, we'll be up, you know, an overall population a little bit next year. Now these are by no means final numbers just because it's June, because we're still accepting applications in certain grades. There are some grades that are, you know, I'd like to keep them right where they are, but. I'll consider applications pretty much across the grades still right now. We don't have any new ones coming in at the moment. And we, of course, like every year, we have some people that we accepted that haven't returned, you know, either have declined to come or haven't returned our phone calls yet. So the numbers are still fluid, and I'll keep uh, school choice open throughout the summer. But come the beginning of the school year, that's when we lock it down and, and stick with the numbers we have, just oh. in our policy to do it that way. How's the pre-kindergarten um, yeah, with the fine. full day? Is that looking yeah, it's promising for us? The only thing the only thing we may not need to do right now is the extended day until 5, 5.30 because we only have one family that requested it. So we're probably not going to hire staff to see us through to the extended day. But in terms of the overall numbers, we're, is, we're hitting our targets. Is that the pre-K, is that too young to go to after school program? Yes. That's all I ask. Is there exceptions? No. We're not licensed. Okay. okay. I just figure I ask. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So that's, uh, I'll stop for a moment to see if you have any questions about enrollment or school choice, otherwise I'll move on to. I just heard about another Waitley student that was choosing to go to a different school next year. Um, so I think there's three that are maybe leaving from the fifth Katie, that, that could change. Right. You know, I, so, I don't, you know, you I have to remind you that you're hearing, you live in town, so right. you're hearing uh, hearsay. So I just want to keep an eye on, wait, you know, residents that are choosing to go leave the district and try and understand what the drivers might be and if there are things we should be doing in the school, et cetera. And I know, I'm not sure what the situation is, but I just think that's an important thing. To yeah, I don't, sometimes you know things before I do people will talk about going somewhere else and yeah. sometimes they do and sometimes they don't there's no I mean I can certainly when that when a family chooses to leave I can certainly contact them have a conversation about it mm -hmm. but there's no mechanism in advance unless they choose to, to say you know. we're moving on okay. yeah at which point I would ask that question yeah. but sometimes I don't know that until you know yeah. I walk in in the summer one day and Mary says so we got a request for records from such and such school for such and such student, mm -hmm. and that's our first indication that they're moving on. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to 
so I'm just thinking in terms of a long term trend. I think one thing I'm also interested in is how you have, when you have classes that are more challenging than others, it's hard in a school that only has one class. That's right. To, um, change things because the players are going to be always the same, pretty much. That's right. So I'd be curious to learn more about how you manage that and how we can think about that in a very small school because I think that might be one of the part of the challenge. Yeah. And again, those challenges come in different forms, and shape, and sizes, around. depending on the year. Mm -hmm. I'd be glad to have that conversation with you at some mm -hmm. point if okay. you'd like to know a little bit more about it. Um, and the other thing that I, was the other thing I wanted to just say along those lines was one of the things you were talking that came to mind for me. And if I remember it, you know, <laughs> you, but it's just one of those moments. No, like, like, God, God. God. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Okay, so the other part of my report is just a, a really a really awesome thing that I want to share with you. So four or five years ago, maybe even six, uh, Terry Anderson introduced us to this group called the Sante Sana for Education that were building schools in small villages in Tanzania that had no schools, where kids didn't really go to school. And um, Ashley Washburn runs that organization called the Sante Sana. And we partnered with them, and, and for the past five or six years, we have been... Um, raising money and providing it to that organization for various things. You've seen some of our pictures and posters of classrooms in, in these rural villages in Tanzania where they've stenciled onto the desk, you know, courtesy of Waitley Elementary School and things like that. Um, so uh, Terry Anderson uh, is going to travel to Tanzania this summer with mm -hmm. the Sante Sana. Um, we Skype with them on a regular basis. and. Um, and in our world, in the world of education, one of the things that we are um, uh, passionate about is remembering that, um, that a lot of our kids are going to be global citizens, more global than we ever have been and more global than we ever probably will be. Um, and so part of being a global citizen is having cultural competencies, global competencies, understanding that the whole world doesn't look like our small town here. And, um, and that's one of the things that we've been able to accomplish by having this sister relationship with these um, villages in Tanzania. When we Skype with them, um, the interesting things always happen. One is that we learn things about us that is very much alike, the agriculture maybe that we do, the animals that we see or don't see. Um, and of course, there's also a lot of things about us that are very different. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's really important for our kids to, to expose them and to help them to understand you know, that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily look like us, act like us, think like us. Uh, but that, again, in the long run, we have more in common than we have differences. And, um, and so for us, it's very exciting to have one of our own folks uh, going over there when she is there. Um, uh, she will be doing, I'm sure, a lot of videotaping and taking notes. And when she comes back in the fall, Terry, I'm sure we'll do a seminar or some sort of a presentation, and I, I intend to either have you present or, or ask her to come here and maybe do a short version of it for school committee in the fall so we can learn some more about it. Um, but it's just really exciting for us to know that, that our little school is connected with three very little schools, mm -hmm. a lot smaller than ours. We're talking about one, one, one school house, <laughs> yeah, with different age groups of kids, and uh, 100 yards away, the teacher's house right mm -hmm. there because this is a teacher they brought in from the city somewhere. You know, they don't find them in their own communities. They have to import them. Um, so yeah, very different and very uh, culturally different, but very cool. And so we're pretty excited for Terry that she was able to make this trip. And more on that when we see you in the fall. And Don, I'll let you know too. So you can I'll see you on TV. All right. Um, how do you raise money? Uh, we just promote here at school. And uh, you know, we might, you know, I don't know, I can't recall if diff at different times if we've sold something or yeah, if we've just like raised, you know, put a jar out or something. Yeah, like plants. plants. So, yeah, we do plants for Tanzania. The hanging plants go to Tanzania. Thank you. Just and that's actually a good reminder for me to, to say that uh, that's uh, Brent, uh, Brent's farm. Brent Young. Brent Young. Brent Young. Uh, Brent. Gives Brent. Brent, I think. He gives us a great deal on those plants so that we can resell them and make some money to do this. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, it's a great program, like it's... And a little a bit of, of money goes a long way. Yeah, that's true. A few hundred dollars buys a classroom full of desks over there, or a few hundred dollars can roof... roof and how does, how does Terry pay for getting down there? So she, on this particular trip, she is covering her own flight expenses, but the rest of the trip is covered by the organization Asante Sana. That was the deal for her. Um, 
Right. Can I just make um, a comment about the great play that was put on this yes, last month? You. And to really acknowledge the people that helped put that together, um, Stephanie and... Stephanie Appenell and Steve, Steve Damon, yeah, Damon and were Lauren. the primary players. Lauren it was a lot of work, and, and the, the students blast. really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I have to say, it was one of the best performances I've been yeah, to here in yeah. the school. So a lot of people chipped in, you know, in terms of costumes or buying hats or just doing small things. It really was a great community effort. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I was duly impressed. Yes, yeah, so just very colorful. impressive. Wasn't the, the kids were so colorful. I was the first one to make a mistake. I had I had the job <laughs> of changing the songs and at the end of the first song I had, you know, with a little bit of moisture in my eyes and listening to the crowd roar, I forgot to shut the song off. So it went to the second song and they're saying, no, no, not yet. <laughs> so I turned that off and then I started the wrong song, but it's because I was overwhelmed with the applause. After that, it was smooth, but oh, yeah. it really was. It awesome. really was Thank you excellent, for bringing that and up. I hope it will, something will continue because yes. I think it brings a lot to the school. I mean, they enunciated well. I understood the words mm -hmm. and um, the expressions. It, it was it was fun. It yeah. was a blast. We've already met to debrief a little bit about the play. Um, doing a full bone play like that every year feels a little daunting. So at the moment, we're talking about maybe having a smaller, you know, in between years, maybe doing a little smaller production, maybe you know, highlighting some of the kids in the younger grades and then the following year doing a big production again. That's just us talking right now. We'll see where it goes, but we don't want to give it up. Yeah. We definitely don't want to give it up. It was really awesome. It was great. And it's a little, it's got some expense that goes with it. PTO was kind enough to cover a lot of the cost for mm -hmm. purchasing the script and, you know, helping us with purchasing things for the sets and all of that stuff. But it gets a little expensive, but worth every penny. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was great stuff. Thanks, Katie, mm -hmm. for bringing that up. Okay. Superintendent's report. Thank you, Don. Um, so you have a copy of my superintendent's report, and it's it's really quite long, but it is about communication, and I have taken very seriously um, the request for more information. But what I'd like to direct everyone's uh, attention to is our website. It's a comprehensive uh, district and school website. It uh, is it, our website. The information is extensive. We post all current activities, announcements daily, as well as upcoming dates and events, and any updates as they happen. And you know, Frontier Regional site. It, the whole school year is posted on a calendar with every activity for every day, for every month. There's also a school newspaper, the Red Hawk Report, which is posted on the website, full of photos and activities of events that will be and will be coming and have happened. You know Frontier Regional is a very active school. Next year we'll be televising our student-led morning news on the website as well. Uh, information is also provided uh, on the Frontier website about our 24 clubs and activities. We have 24 clubs and activities not including myriad of sports. Each club and activity has their own link for more information. Our sports programs also have dedicated links. You'll also find an alumni link, a student health page with information and forms for families to provide us with health information, a library media site with information and in all research applications, as well as the library catalog and the monthly lunch menus. On our district website, you will also find large amounts of information, including the monthly superintendent's report, upcoming events, the parent portal for Power School, our district mission and vision statements, our complete staff directory, our current plan for the district, access to every school in the district, and enlightening information on our early release practice. Each school has their own website, but the district also posts important district news and events on our district page. Also, all our school policies are on the district page that we follow. Um, our school committee meetings and agendas are posted. In addition, if you're interested in our school committee meetings but cannot attend, they are televised on FCAT TV. Um, at Frontier Regional, communication with families about grades, academics, and progress in classes is easy with the parent portal system. Um, our, on the guidance page, the uh, there's um, information on the SAT and ACT exams, college visit dates, college search information, employment information, handbooks and forms, 
homework calendars, curriculum maps, yearbook information, school trips, a listing of faculty and staff emails, scholarships, financial aid, and much more. Um, contacting your school's administrative offices is convenient as all phone numbers, email addresses, and other contact information is provided on the websites. Parents are able to email their child's teachers with questions about their children. I'm also encouraging the principals to use the all-call system to notify parents of important events and invite them to come. We also notify our families when there will be a delay or a snow day. This year I've made uh, an effort to do that the evening before the event to help families make alternative plans in a timely fashion. The, in addition, the union schools send home monthly newsletters to families and some classrooms and grades even have weekly newsletters. And you'll see uh, an example is Lately at Waitley. Every class in the building has um, information on what's happening in the school. Providing the schools with information is an efficient process as well. At the Union 38 elementary schools, each child brings home a back to school pack on the first day of school with an emergency file form to know any changes in address, emergency contacts, and email addresses, as well as the computer acceptable use form for the children to sign and the Google permission, etc. If parents do not sign and return these emergency forms, we send a letter to them directly <coughs> to ensure the parent has signed off telling us that our demographic information is correct. During the summer of each year, the Frontier Regional School mails a packet of information to every student's home including that includes forms for parents to fill out reporting changes in medical and demographic information to ensure the information we have listed is correct. We also send home a hard copy of the school calendar, free and reduced lunch applications, notices from the nurse, and any changes in our procedures families should be aware of. I have set a goal of having at least two newspaper articles about our many and varied programs and accomplishments beyond the usual sports events, the sports coverage, in the Greenfield Recorder each month. So this month we've had, well, in May we had Louise Law's um, report or article on her going to India and connecting with schools there and bridging the, the schools from India to here and, and the learning that these children, they've all had presentations, Waitley's had Louise's presentation, so the children learn what they've learned from India uh, some more international global stuff. Uh, we also had a wonderful article in the paper over the weekend about the senior class president and her story is quite a story to tell too. Um, she was born in Tibet and they moved to India and then came here. And she's quite an accomplished young woman. She uh, is class president. So having said all that, we're trying very hard to reach all our families as we continue to strive to improve. Input from families is very helpful to us as we try to think of ways outside the box to reach as many people as we can. As you can see, we do have the information out there. It may be just a case of informing families where to look. We are constantly working on ways to help familiarize families with the great things we are doing as an educational organization. We enjoy an excellent reputation as an excellent school district because because our faculty and staff work diligently in meeting the needs of all students and their families. I am proud and excited to be part of this school district and will work nonstop to ensure we continually improve in our efforts to reach out to the community. Thank you again for your support of our fine schools. So I would just like to, to put out there asking the families to really take a close look at our website because Families today, they go, they're on Facebook. Gosh knows there's a lot of information out there on Facebook. They buy from eBay, they buy from Amazon, they have Netflix, they, they can navigate websites. Our website, our district website, our frontier site, mm. our elementary school sites are very easy to navigate and there's a wealth of information we provide out there that if um, we can just help them to, to go to the site, they could learn a lot about each of our schools. We're doing some wonderful, exciting things here. So that's my <coughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good report. Thank you. Anything else to come before this board? Um, 
Yeah, not all of them. Oh, you have so far. No. Nope. I'm just going to put oh. it down. The calendar, these are just the new calendars. Yeah. So, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to adjourn at 719. Second. 